Wyatt Cromwell, Las Vegas. I am so excited to be here. Let me tell you why. Many people consider this to be the most luxurious Caesars property. We're gonna find out if that is true. Also, it's the only standalone boutique hotel on the Strip. Just 188 rooms, that's puny. It has an award-winning, critically acclaimed restaurant called Giada, and its pool is just no regular pool. It's Dre's Beach Club. This is Coolest Luxury Hotels, Cromwell, Las Vegas. All right, inside the room at Cromwell, Las Vegas. My first impressions of this room and first impressions of this casino hotel property are that it's impressive. Seemingly, it's everything is advertised and seemingly it's everything I'm looking for. Adults only, 21 plus, check. Uh, a standalone upscale boutique hotel in Vegas on the Strip, check. Uh, a European style vibe and atmosphere, check. There looked to be a really cool marketplace downstairs called Eat Well. The food looked fresh, fast, delicious, and cheap. Perfect combination. I'm gonna go down there real quick, get some food, come back up here and show you this room. All right, back in the room after Eat Well, and Eat Well was everything I proclaimed it was. It was fast, fresh, delicious, and cheap. The perfect combination when looking for food in Las Vegas. The two breakfast sandwiches stacked together were extraordinary, and that chef salad for $12 was the deal of a century. I have a feeling, and I have a hunch, that I am going to be eating there every single day. Let's start with the view. This is a strip view. There's a view of the Eiffel Tower and a view of the Bellagio Fountains, which are going off right now. The bathroom is neatly tucked away. It's very classy. It's probably the coolest part of this room, and I will show you that in just a second. Stepping back, there's a big, bold, beautiful TV that is perfectly positioned in front of this bed. We'll get to this bed in just a second. This room doesn't have a desk or work area. Uh, the closest thing you have is this little backgammon table right here. The cool thing about this is that it wheels around the room so you can put this wherever you want. It does raise and lower, so if you want to position this next to the bed to have breakfast in bed, you can certainly be able to do that. But if you want to have breakfast in bed, the bed has to be comfortable. You have to want to be there even when you wake up. Let's check it out. So I don't think Caesars makes a bad bed. I've been, I think this is my fourth Caesars property and I haven't had a bad Caesars bed yet. That thing is utterly amazing. And then here is the bathroom, single vanity, separated toilet room, and then a huge shower. Black and white, glass all the way to the top. You have a bench in here if you want to be comfortable. Enjoy the good life. To win without risk is to triumph without glory. Bless the ones who curse you, that's life. And then say la vie, which I say all the time.
All right, good morning. First official day here at Cromwell. First official full day, full night. I have a pretty big day planned. I wanna tell you about it, but first I want to talk about last night. Let me show you very quickly how I settled into the room. I essentially used this couch as storage for my suitcases. I think that's probably the best way to use it. Not gonna sit on it, not gonna sleep on it, don't wanna stare at it, so I just used that couch to house my suitcases. It's working really well. All my stuff is really close to the bed. I actually really recommend that idea. And then over on the makeup stool, makeup area, I just use this as a peripheral center, got all my stuff plugged in. Uh, there are so many outlets and there's a lot of great light, so that is my mobile command center right there. So I might not be using this room as planned, but I'm using it quite efficiently, if I do say so myself. All right, last night I went over to Koi at Planet Hollywood. It was closed every single night I was over there. But because Planet Hollywood is so close to Cromwell and because they're both owned by Caesars and because Cromwell only has one restaurant, I thought it was kind of fitting to go over there because if you're staying at Cromwell for more than one night and if you still want the Caesars experience and you're looking for a restaurant, I think Koi would be an excellent choice. And let me tell you something, Koi had the best happy hour I've ever seen in Vegas, okay? So we're talking the best happy hour spot. I couldn't believe it. Menu items half off, drinks half off, um, $7 drinks, $6 sushi rolls, and they were delectable. In fact, I ordered a bunch of them just to take home. They were that good of a value. Best drink was the orange fireball drink. That was exceptional. And I probably had four or five sushi rolls, but the standout was the Sin City Roll. Right, Sin City Roll in Vegas, you gotta do it. It had habanero caviar on it. God, I'm still thinking about it today. Go over to Koi, go to happy hour, it's between five and nine. You could run up a $300 tab for probably $120. So let's talk about this strip facing room very quickly. Yesterday I said I didn't mind it. I like the energy and I like the aura that was emitted from the crowd down there. Uh, I recant, I don't, I hate it, it's loud. There's a ton of street traffic. There are a ton of street performers, specifically religious zealots that are hanging out right outside my room. I'm all for freedom of speech. I'm all for the First Amendment, just not outside my Cromwell suite. I would have converted to any religion they were proclaiming just to get them out of my window. Wow. Thank goodness that window on that balcony is locked because if it wasn't, I would have done a super fly Jimmy Snooker right off that balcony. All right, big day today, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. Today is opening day for Dre's Beach Club. This is something I would have said maybe five or 10 years ago, but there isn't a pool specifically for hotel guests at Cromwell. So they partner with Dre's to let in some of the hotel guests. And because today is opening day at Dre's, I have no idea what to expect. All I know is that the reserved seats for the hotel guests are limited, I'm told very limited. So I'm gonna get down there and wait in line like a sheep and hopefully get a good spot. We'll find out. All right, last day, last night here at Cromwell. If you hadn't noticed, there wasn't any dinner footage from last night, and that's because yours truly had a liquid diet at Dre's all day. And that liquid diet coupled with being in the sun all day and just the amount of energy that was spent, I was down for the count. I think I woke up after Dre's. Dre's closed at five. So I think after Dre's, I don't think, I know, after Dre's I went to bed, woke up at nine, took down like half of my double breakfast sandwich and then conveniently went back to bed for the rest of the night. Dre's was a great time. I never thought I'd go back to Dre's again ever in my life, but there isn't a pool here at Cromwell. So if you wanna go to the pool at Cromwell, then you are gonna have to go to Dre's. Now here's the cool thing, is that the day bed I got, I got for zero dollars. Well, let me explain that. Typically, a day bed at Dre's will cost between $500 and $1,000. That's the minimum you have to spend on food and beverage to reserve that day bed. But if you're a hotel guest, 
there are a limited number of seats available just for hotel guests and there are no minimums. Now, did I spend zero dollars? No, my bill was pretty hefty. If you wanted an economical way to get into Dre's and not spend a lot of money, just stay at Cromwell, get in line early for the day, and get your day bed for a zero dollar minimum. I think that's one of the best hotel pool hacks in all of Vegas. You know, just, just to talk about Dre's very quickly, Dre's is Dre's. If you know Dre's, then you know Dre's. Um, well, that was really eloquent, wasn't it? But it's one of the more turned up pool parties there is. Um, really energetic, really lively, borderline wild and chaotic. The video that you saw, I took right away in the morning when nobody was there. Uh, it was definitely a bit more rambunctious and rowdy than what you saw. I didn't want to violate anybody's privacy. I didn't want to be that guy with the camera uh, when things were in full swing. So I took the photos of the landscape and the pool so you could get a good idea of what it looks like. But if you really want to feel some awesome energy, I do recommend going to that pool party. I think it is one of the best day clubs in Vegas. Okay, it's my last night at Cromwell. Before I get into that, I just want to give a very quick general update. This hotel is everything I thought it was, and then everything I thought it wasn't. I've been perplexed on Paris. I've been perplexed on Planet Hollywood, and I'm perplexed on uh, Cromwell. I just don't know how I feel about it. I'm going to sleep on it tonight, and I give my full overview in the morning tomorrow when I check out. Tonight, I'm going to Giada. It's the on-site Italian place. It's the only on-site restaurant. I'm hoping it's going to be delectable. I did take a look at the menu, and there are some items that have piqued my fancy, so definitely looking forward to that. Afterwards, I think I'm going to try my luck on slots. There is a high-stakes slot room here at Cromwell, so I'm going to go over and saunter to that and maybe change my luck. I got on my lucky jacket, my Vegas jacket with the card suits on here. So I'm hoping it will bring me some luck. I haven't hit on one of these yet, and I'm hoping that today is gonna to be the day. Depending on how I'm feeling, I might go down to the lobby bar afterwards. It's right across from the sports book, and it looks like a really upscale, classy place to have an evening cocktail to finish the night. All right, good morning. Feeling sensational today. I thought I was feeling pretty remarkable yesterday, and I was, but I had no idea that mood and that feeling would be taken up a couple notches today. Feeling awesome mentally, physically, and also monetarily. And that is because I won last night on high stakes slots. I can't believe it. It had to be the jacket, of course. And then I was feeling the certain slot machine. It was called Strike It Rich Again. It was very fitting because this YouTube thing is the second chapter of my life, so struck it rich again. That really magnetized me. And also that slot machine had a game within a game. You don't see too many game within games high stakes slot machines, so I knew it had to be for me. It wasn't anything of a bonanza. You know, it, it wasn't huge fortunes, but put in 50, got paid 175, so I got a net win of $125 and that will certainly fund my next high stakes slots adventure over at the Mirage. That's where I'm heading to now. I got an amazing room. That's gonna be in a different video or videos. So let's finish up on Cromwell today. Cromwell, oh, this isn't gonna be good. And it's too bad because when I walked in, I was just enamored with the place. I loved it. I thought it was everything I was looking for. It's 21 plus, adults only. That's my type of crowd, so that was a huge selling point for me. Parisian decorated, very classy, very luxurious. That was a major uptick. I walked in and I just felt at home. The place hit me, but appearances can be deceiving. And after three nights, I gotta say this place is not for me. And let me tell you why. Actually, before I get into that, just let me go off into a tangent. I'll digress on that. And I wanna tell you about last night. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of this hotel. The restaurant last night, Giada, was all show. It was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful Italian restaurants I've ever seen. Now I called Scarpetta's cool, and the one over at Paris Hotel, I forget the name, the really trendy one with the South Philly Brute with the disco lights and the blue lighting, that was really cool. This was classy. Classy but approachable. Um, it had open air windows so you could let the breeze of the Vegas nights come in. Beautifully decorated, 
sunken dining room, extravagant bar. When I walked in, I'm like, wow, this could be a legitimate Italian meal. If, 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 if the meal was as good as the decor and the ambiance and the atmosphere, and it wasn't. I run into this all the time. It was all show, no go. The menu was decent, but the plates were small and the food was average. So that's why I didn't like it. If the plates were huge and the food was average, I'd give it more of a better rating, but the plates were small and the food was just average. If you're looking for a romantic dinner and you're really flexible with your palate and you don't necessarily need the best food, which sounds weird because why wouldn't you go to the best place with the best food in Vegas? Because there's so many options. But if you're on site and you really don't have a discerning taste for Italian, you just kind of want to go to something convenient or something really cool, this is the spot for you. But if you want a really phenomenal Italian meal, I'm gonna tell you to go elsewhere. So yeah, I was really let down by Giada. Um, critically acclaimed, award-winning, I don't know. I don't know who those people are because I just wasn't feeling it. Um, after dinner, I just went down to the lobby bar, which was palatial, it was opulent, right across from the sports book. So you can place a bet at the sports book and then go across to the lobby bar and watch and keep an eye on your game or keep an eye on your action. I thought that was really convenient and really efficient. This morning I woke up, I'm up and at them. I got a huge day today. Went down and again, got my uh, ritualistic decaf, skinny vanilla latte, got a couple egg sandwiches as well. I formulated my thoughts on this room and on this property and here they are. This is a boutique hotel and I thought I would love the boutique hotel experience in Vegas. Isolated, small, intimate, only 188 rooms. I thought it'd be quiet. I thought it'd be luxurious and upscale. And it really wasn't very many of those at all, if any. This is the loudest hotel room I've ever been in, period. And here's the issue. It's on the busiest intersection of the Vegas Strip. So you're gonna get a medley of loud street performers. You're gonna get a ton of evangelicals and just people just shouting just randomly. You're going to get a ton of motor traffic and really obnoxious and loud motor traffic. It's Vegas, it's the Vegas Strip. People like to race their cars. They like to rev their engines. They like to show off. They just like to do dumb stuff. It's Vegas. And it's right outside this intersection right here. There's a stoplight here, so the cars back up. There's a ton of noise from their stereos and just from just general motor vehicles and it is not fun. The only quiet hours I observed were from approximately 3 a.m to 9 a.m. After that, it's nonstop noise the entire day. And I experience this every single day. It wasn't anomalistic, it wasn't exceptional, it was every single day. So I'm pretty sure it's like this 365 days a year. Also on the boutique hotel aspect, you're gonna get bored with this hotel after a day because there's just not much to do. The casino floor is really small, um, the slot machine selection is really small, there's only one restaurant, and there isn't even a pool, you have to go to Dre's. And while I enjoyed the comp of the year, and it really is probably one of the biggest hotel hacks and Vegas hacks I've ever seen, where if you stay at this hotel, you can go to Dre's for free with a zero dollar minimum. Granted, you get in line early and get one of the limited seats, which I did. But what if you don't want that tomfoolery and chaos and bedlam of Dre's. But if you just wanna chill out by a pool and have a drink, you're not gonna get that here. And that's kind of disconcerting because I feel a hotel of this magnitude, uh, this magnitude of luxury and this magnitude of class should offer another pool. Obviously, this wasn't always a Cromwell. It was another hotel before this and they just don't have room or the capability to build another pool. But you should know very well that Dre's is the only pool on site. And if you're not about that crowd or about that experience, you are absolutely going to want to stay somewhere else. You know, just to continue that theme, there's only one restaurant and I actually spent more time and more money at Eat Well, which was the marketplace downstairs. I think I went there at least once a day, if not twice a day. And frankly, that was the better food. It's pretty sad when the best thing I had at Giada was the gelato and that wasn't even that good. So there just aren't a lot of options in entirety. Not a lot of dining options, not a lot of gambling options, not a lot of attraction options, just not a lot of options, period. Before I get to my rating, I wanna talk about the room. The bed was out of this world. Better than the Paris bed, and if it is the same Paris bed, then it's a newer one because it was just remarkable. My qualms with the room is that the bathroom was really small. Upon initial impression, it looked decent, but 
the vanity didn't even have enough room for my um, little bathroom tote bag and my hair dryer to be on each side. So the bathroom was ultra small and there's so much noise in this casino. This is really a party property and I think the majority of that can be attributed to Dre's. Dre's Beach Club is very energetic and I'm using a very diplomatic word, okay? Dre's Beach Club is energetic. Then you have uh, Dre's Night Club, whatever that's called. I think it's just called maybe Dre's Night Club. And then you have Dre's After Hours. And if you know anything about Dre's After Hours, it's where everybody comes to the party at three, four o'clock in the morning after the regular clubs close at three, four o'clock in the morning. And that club goes on till like, I think 11 a.m. or noon. Spent some time there in another life and I know exactly what that is. And I know exactly the element it brings in, the crowd it brings in, and the experience that it brings in. And if you're looking for some solitude, if you're looking for some luxury, if you're looking for some class, I can't say that that is the most sophisticated or classy crowd that comes in here. And I gotta say, look, I used to be part of that crowd. It is what it is. I'm not being judgmental, I'm just being objective. So the element that Dre's brings in, coupled with the street noise, coupled with the busiest intersection on Vegas, I just can't give this hotel a high grade. I wanted to, I actually thought when I walked in on my first night, I was gonna say, is this gonna be better than the Caesars property? Because I hold Caesars in very high esteem. It's one of my favorite hotels in Vegas, easily. I'd probably say top three or four. And I was thinking to myself, maybe this, this boutique, upscale, opulent, luxury experience could be exactly what I'm looking for, maybe even more so than Caesars. And as each day progressed and evolved, I gotta say, it lost a point. So it started out with me as a four, at least where I thought it'd be conceptually, and this is ending as a one. I am giving this a pass. Cromwell is a pass rating. Who this hotel is going to appeal to is the 21 plus crowd who don't wanna deal with any families or children. You wanna be able to walk around in a scantily clad swimsuit and not feel awkward about it. If you wanna be more liberal with your personality, and if you wanna be more liberal with your language, this is certainly gonna be the spot for you. Also, this is a one and done hotel. And what I mean by that is one night. And I know a lot of people that come to Vegas for a night. I used to be one of them. That's a big thing in California, is coming to Vegas for a night. Because Vegas and California are so close in proximity, you could just come for a night. It's no different than driving for a very long dinner. A very long dinner, but still, you get my point. So for those of you that wanna come for one night and you wanna go to Dre's, maybe you wanna have a Dre day where you go to Dre's Beach Club, you go to Dre's Night Club, and then you go to Dre's After Hours, it's really nice to stay on site. And that is one thing that I did enjoy was being able just to walk to the nightclub, to the beach, um, just to Dre's because normally I have to get into a taxi, it's a whole ordeal. And I found it to be ultra convenient and ultra comfortable to walk outside my hotel room walk over to Dre's, go upstairs, didn't have to get a taxi, didn't have to do with any of that. It was an easy breezy stroll. And if you are at Dre's, you wanna come back to your room, make a phone call, maybe change, or maybe just even take a nap, you can do that. So that was really convenient. So for those of you looking for the 24 to 48 hour Vegas experience, you're not gonna spend a lot of time in your room, you really don't care about the restaurants, you're gonna be out and about, or moreover, you're gonna be spending time at Dre's. If Dre's is your favorite place, you're gonna spend uh, the day there, the night there, or the early morning there, or maybe all three, this is gonna be the spot for you. That's really the only clientele that I can recommend this hotel to. This is not a destination. This is not an experience hotel. You are gonna be completely disappointed if you come to Cromwell and expect to get even a Planet Hollywood or Paris experience, let alone a Bellagio, Palazzo, Aria, something like that you are gonna be let down and underwhelmed completely. So that's it, I'm off to the Mirage and I will see you in that video.